Pulse Doppler Radar A pulse Doppler radar is a radar system that determines the range to a target using pulse timing techniques and uses the Doppler effect of the return signal to determine the target object's velocity. It combines the features of pulse radars and continuous wave radars, which were formerly separate due to the complexity of the electronics. The first operational pulse Doppler radar was in the CIM-10 Bomark, an American long-range supersonic missile powered by ramjet engines, and which was armed with a W-40 nuclear weapon to destroy entire formations of attacking enemy aircraft. Pulse Doppler systems were first widely used on fighter aircraft starting in the 1960s. Earlier radars had used pulse timing in order to determine range and the angle of the antenna, or similar means, to determine the bearing. However, this only worked when the radar antenna was not pointed down, in that case the reflection off the ground overwhelmed any returns from other objects. As the ground moves at the same speed but opposite direction of the aircraft, Doppler techniques allow the ground return to be filtered out, revealing aircraft and vehicles. This gives pulse Doppler radars look down slash shoot down capability. A secondary advantage in military radar is to reduce the transmitted power while achieving acceptable performance for improved safety of stealthy radar. Pulse Doppler techniques also find widespread use in meteorological radars, allowing the radar to determine wind speed from the velocity of any precipitation in the air. Pulse Doppler radar is also the basis of synthetic aperture radar used in radar astronomy, remote sensing and mapping. In air traffic control, they are used for discriminating aircraft from clutter. Besides the above conventional surveillance applications, pulse Doppler radar has been successfully applied in healthcare, such as fall risk assessment and fall detection, for nursing or clinical purposes. History The earliest radar systems failed to operate as expected. The reason was traced to Doppler effects that degrade performance of systems not designed to account for moving objects. Fast-moving objects cause a phase shift on the transmit pulse that can produce signal cancellation. Doppler has maximum detrimental effect on moving target indicator systems, which must use reverse phase shift for Doppler compensation in the detector. Doppler weather effects precipitation were also found to degrade conventional radar and moving target indicator radar, which can mask aircraft reflections. This phenomenon was adapted for use with weather radar in the 1950s after declassification of some World War Roman II systems. Pulse Doppler radar was developed during World War Roman II to overcome limitations by increasing pulse repetition frequency. This required the development of the clistron, the traveling wave tube, and solid state devices. Early pulse Dopplers were incompatible with other high-power microwave amplification devices that are not coherent, but more sophisticated techniques were developed that record the phase of each transmitted pulse for comparison to return to COS. Early examples of military systems includes the Inslash SP Geminis 51B developed during the 1950s specifically for the purpose of operating in hurricane conditions, with no performance degradation. The Hughes and Slash as Geminis 18 fire control system was a prototype airborne radar slash combination system for the planned North American XF-108 Rapier Interceptor aircraft for the United States, and later for the Lockheed YF-12. The U.S. first pulse Doppler radar, the system had looked down slash shoot down capability and could track one target at a time. Weather, chaff, terrain, Flying techniques and stealth are common tactics used to hide aircraft from radar. Pulse Doppler radar eliminates these weaknesses. It became possible to use pulse Doppler radar on aircraft after digital computers were incorporated in the design. Pulse Doppler provided look down slash shoot down capability to support air to air missile systems in most modern military aircraft by the mid 1970s. Principle Range measurement. Pulse Doppler systems measure the range to objects by measuring the elapsed time between sending a pulse of radio energy and receiving a reflection of the object. Radio waves travel at the speed of light, 
so the distance to the object is the elapsed time multiplied by the speed of light, divided by two there and back. Velocity measurement. Benefits. Detriments. Ambiguity processing is required when target range is above the red line in the graphic, which increases scan time. Scan time is a critical factor for some systems because vehicles moving at or above the speed of sound can travel 1 mile 1.6 km every few seconds, like the Exocet, Harpoon, Kitchen, and Air-to-Air -air Missile. The maximum time to scan the entire volume of the sky must be on the order of a dozen seconds or less for systems operating in that environment. Pulse Doppler radar by itself can be too slow to cover the entire volume of space above the horizon unless fan beam is used. This approach is used with the slash SPS 49 V5 Very Long Range Air Surveillance Radar, which sacrifices elevation measurement to gain speed. Pulse Doppler antenna motion must be slow enough so that all the return signals from at least three different PRF can be processed out to the maximum anticipated detection range. This is known as dwell time. Antenna motion for pulse Doppler must be as slow as radar using MTI. Search radar that include pulse Doppler are usually dual mode because best overall performance is achieved when pulse Doppler is used for areas with high false alarm rates horizon or below in weather, while conventional radar will scan faster in free space where false alarm rate is low above horizon with clear skies. The antenna type is an important consideration for multi-mode radar because undesirable phase shift introduced by the radar antenna can degrade performance measurements for subclutter visibility. Signal processing. The signal processing enhancement of pulse Doppler allows small high-speed objects to be detected in close proximity to large slow-moving reflectors. To achieve this, the transmitter must be coherent and should produce low phase noise during the detection interval, and the receiver must have large instantaneous dynamic range. Pulse Doppler Signal Processing Detailed Explanation Pulse Doppler Signal Processing also includes ambiguity resolution to identify true range and velocity. Ambiguity Resolution Detailed Explanation The received signals from multiple PRF are compared to determine true range using the Range Ambiguity Resolution process. Range Ambiguity Resolution Detailed Explanation The received signals are also compared using the Frequency Ambiguity Resolution process. Frequency Ambiguity Resolution Detailed Explanation Range Resolution Velocity Resolution Special Consideration Pulse Doppler Radar has special requirements that must be satisfied to achieve acceptable performance. Pulse Repetition Frequency Pulse Doppler typically uses medium pulse repetition frequency PRF from about 3K8C to 30K8C. The range between transmit pulses is 5KM to 50KM. Range and velocity cannot be measured directly using medium PRF and ambiguity resolution is required to identify true range and speed. Doppler signals are generally above 1 khc, which is audible so audio signals from medium PRF systems can be used for passive target classification. Angular measurement Radar systems require angular measurement. Transponders are not normally associated with pulse Doppler radar, so sidelobe suppression is required for practical operation. Tracking radar systems use angle error to improve accuracy by producing measurements perpendicular to the radar antenna beam. Angular measurements are averaged over a span of time and combined with radial movement to develop information suitable to predict target position for a short time into the future. The two angle error techniques used with tracking radar are monopulse and conical scan. Monopulse radar, conical scanning, coherency. Pulse Doppler radar requires a coherent oscillator with very little noise. Phase noise reduces subclutter visibility performance by producing apparent motion on stationary objects. Cavity magnetron and crossed field amplifier are not appropriate because noise introduced by these devices interfere with detection performance. The only amplification devices suitable for pulse Doppler are clostron, traveling wave tube, and solid state devices. 
Scalloping. Pulse Doppler signal processing introduces a phenomenon called scalloping. The name is associated with a series of holes that are scooped out of the detection performance. Scalloping for pulse Doppler radar involves blind velocities created by the clutter rejection filter. Every volume of space must be scanned using three or more different PRF. A two PRF detection scheme will have detection gaps with a pattern of discrete ranges, each of which has a blind velocity. Windowing. Ringing artifacts pose a problem with search, detection, and ambiguity resolution in pulse Doppler radar. Ringing is reduced in two ways. First, the shape of the transmit pulse is adjusted to smooth the leading edge and trailing edge so that RF power is increased and decreased without an abrupt change. This creates a transmit pulse with smooth ends instead of a square wave, which reduces ringing phenomenon that is otherwise associated with target reflection. Second, the shape of the receive pulse is adjusted using a window function that minimizes ringing that occurs any time pulses are applied to a filter. In a digital system, this adjusts the phase and slash or amplitude of each sample before it is applied to the fast Fourier transform. The Dolph Chebyshev window is the most effective because it produces a flat processing floor with no ringing that would otherwise cause false alarms. Antenna Diffraction Choppy surfaces, like waves and trees, form a diffraction grating suitable for bending microwave signals. Pulse Doppler can be so sensitive that diffraction from mountains, buildings or wave tops can be used to detect fast-moving objects otherwise blocked by solid obstruction along the line of sight. This is a very lossy phenomenon that only becomes possible when radar has significant excess subclutter visibility. Refraction and ducting use transmit frequency at L-band or lower to extend the horizon, which is very different from diffraction. Refraction for over-the-horizon radar uses variable density in the air column above the surface of the Earth to bend RF signals. An inversion layer can produce a transient troposphere duct that traps RF signals in a thin layer of air like a waveguide. Subplutter visibility Performance Aircraft tracking uses Pulse Doppler radar for aircraft detection has two modes. Scan Track scan mode involves frequency filtering, amplitude thresholding, and ambiguity resolution. Once a reflection has been detected and resolved, the pulse Doppler radar automatically transitions to tracking mode for the volume of space surrounding the track. Track mode works like a phase locked loop, where Doppler velocity is compared with the range movement on successive scans. Lock indicates the difference between the two measurements is below a threshold which can only occur with an object that satisfies Newtonian mechanics. Other types of electronic signals cannot produce a lock. Lock exists in no other type of radar. The lock criteria needs to be satisfied during normal operation. Pulse Doppler Signal Processing SS Lock Lock eliminates the need for human intervention with the exception of helicopters and electronic jamming. Weather phenomenon obey adiabatic process associated with air mass and not Newtonian mechanics, so the lock criteria is not normally used for weather radar. Pulse Doppler signal processing selectively excludes low-velocity reflections so that no detections occurs below a threshold velocity. This eliminates terrain weather biologicals and mechanical jamming with the exception of decoy aircraft. The target Doppler signal from the detection is converted from frequency domain back into time domain sound for the operator in track mode on some radar systems. The operator uses this sound for passive target classification, such as recognizing helicopters and electronic jamming. Helicopters Special consideration is required for aircraft with large moving parts because pulsed Doppler radar operates like a phase-locked loop. Blade tips moving near the speed of sound produce the only signal that can be detected when a helicopter is moving slow near terrain and weather. Helicopters appears like a rapidly pulsing noise emitter except in a clear environment free from clutter. An audible signal is produced for passive identification of the type of airborne object. 
Microwave Doppler frequency shift produced by reflector motion falls into the audible sound range for human beings 20-20,000 20, HC, which is used for target classification in addition to the kinds of conventional radar display used for that purpose, like a scope, B-scope, C-scope, and RHI indicator. The human ear may be able to tell the difference better than electronic equipment. A special mode is required because the Doppler velocity feedback information must be unlinked from radial movement so that the system can transition from scan to track with no lock. Similar techniques are required to develop track information for jamming signals and interference that cannot satisfy the lock criteria. Multi-mode Pulse Doppler radar must be multi-mode to handle aircraft turning and crossing trajectory. Once in track mode, pulse Doppler radar must include a way to modify Doppler filtering for the volume of space surrounding a track when radial velocity falls below the minimum detection velocity. Doppler filter adjustment must be linked with a radar track function to automatically adjust Doppler rejection speed within the volume of space surrounding the track. Tracking will cease without this feature because the target signal will otherwise be rejected by the Doppler filter when radial velocity approaches zero because there is no change in frequency. Multi-mode operation may also include continuous wave illumination for semi-active radar homing.